Yes. So this is um, part two of episode four, uh, I believe, or part four is episode two of the Back to Basics Virto Studio tutorial series, where I'm covering um, basic stuff on how to um, use the app. This particular video we're going to talk about the uh, primitive types of the objects that are built into the app. Those are prefabricated or pre-built 3D objects for you to use in the scene uh, as you wish. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive into explaining those. I'm going to try to make this a short video because the last one was pretty lengthy uh, and you know it's a lot to take in. Uh, this one will be pretty um, pretty short and, and lighthearted. Um, the point of this video is to go into the shapes and show what they are and, and how they work, but the next video we're going to get into advanced basics of, uh, or, or basics of 3D modeling, geometry, and, and how, it's, how 3D surfaces are actually built. But I don't want to get into that right now, so this is, this is going to be a simple video. Um, also, because uh, I just released it, and for good measure, uh, this video is going to be shown using the Mac version of Virto Studio on the desktop. Rest assured, um, it is exactly the same feature-wise, especially for the primitives that are on the iPad. So everything I'm about to show you is exactly the same on the iPad, so don't worry if you're on the iPad version of the app, you can follow right along. Even scene files that you create with the Mac version of Virto Studio can open in the iPad one and vice versa. There's, there's no issues with that. So um, starting right up, uh, we have the default scene here. Uh, you'll see that the default scene actually already contains one of the primitive types, which is the plane. And I'm going to click the Add button here, and I'm going to show you all the possible um, objects there are in the default object library. So the first one you can see already is the plane. I'm going to delete the one that comes with the scene just so you can see what happens if I add one. The plane is a simple um, quadrilateral polygon. Uh, it's actually made up out of two triangles, but um, as far as you're concerned, it's a single polygon to that um, is basically just a plane and um, you can you know you can texture it do anything anything you want to it but it's basically just a plane there isn't really much I can say about the plane um, we're gonna come back to sketch because it's one of the more interesting ones um, there's also um, the extremely exciting cube uh, the cube is basically a six-sided three-dimensional box um, which is useful you know, for if you want a box. Um, one of the interesting things about the cube or in the shapes in general is that you can use them as kind of a starting point to build other interesting objects and I'll really cover that in, 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 in detail when I go into the actual edit mode and, 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 and modeling uh, video which should be coming up shortly. But you know, I can take this box and I can scale it non-uniformly and, and, and do interesting things with it. So that's the box. I probably should stop going off on tangents and just cover these things without talking too much. So here's the sphere. Uh, the sphere is the first one that gives you objects when you go to use it, namely the number of slices and stacks. You can think of this as the sphere resolution. So if I click this little thingy to lock these together, I can vary the sphere resolution and, and control the uh, how, how many triangles or how many polygons are in my resulting sphere. So that is uh, my sphere. Next up after the sphere, we have the terrain. The best way I can describe the terrain is that it is a highly tessellated plane that uh, is, um, varies in the height of the vertices based off of terrain data. So this is the default generation mode for plane, but I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the more interesting options. Uh, we have width and length. These vary um, the resolution of the plane as far as the number of uh, vertices that um, are in uh, are on the width and, and length of the uh, the planar axes. Um, the data source is basically how the terrain height is computed. Random is a sinusoidal or sine wave algorithm with some random variation thrown in. However, it gets very interesting if you switch it to image and use a height map image and drag that in. If you generate a terrain with that, you'll actually see that it. Um, it uses the pixels from the image to generate a very interesting, uh, I guess you could say, um, terrain effect. So that's that's how terrain is done. You can imagine you can generate some very uh, interesting um, scenes with this uh, object alone. So that's why I included it. Um, so that's that's terrain. 
I'm gonna go ahead and move on here. I didn't mean to delete the light, I meant to delete the terrain. There we go. Um, less interesting, moving on, we have the torus. The torus, uh, you can think of as a 3D donut. Um, you can control the number of rings and segments, much like the rings and, uh, and stacks of the sphere, and you can control the two radiuses, or radii, of the torus to generate um, a donut-shaped object, which is cool. So that's torus. Moving right along, um, there's text. This is a more interesting, uh, complex object. What text allows you to do is type in a sentence. Be willing to bet I spelled sentence wrong. Pick a custom font. Any of the fonts that come with the system you can use. And you can extrude your text out in a 3D object, which is very neat. So you can actually um, create 3D text uh, using that feature. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it one more time just to show off text. So let's go ahead and pick everyone's favorite font which is Comic Sans and we're going to do a longer extrusion this time and there it is. There's the 3D text feature. I'm going to move the light to light it better. So that's text. You can do quite a bit with that uh, as you probably already uh, are realizing. Uh, after text, we have cylinder. Uh, you can think of cylinder as basically um, a cylinder. So it's a 3D uh, extruded disc. Um, you know, you could use this as model something like a trash can. Uh, use this as a starting point for something like that. So that's the cylinder. Um, the light, so the rest of these are complex. So I'm going to go all the way to the top now and cover uh, sketch. So the way sketch works is if you want to quickly sketch out uh, a surface that, or in a shape that you want to extrude in 3D, you use Sketch. And the way Sketch works, um, by default, it has four modes. It's got free, polygon, circle, and square. With free, you just, with your finger on the iPad or with your mouse on the Mac, you just draw a shape out. It can be any shape you want. And by default, it's a closed shape. And once you hit done, you've created your shape in 3D. Uh, it extrudes it out, kind of like the way the text worked, but uh, it can, you can make any shape you want. Uh, you imagine uh, this is probably one of the more powerful uh, primitives inside the entire Virto Studio app. Um, as you can realize, I mean, you can do quite a bit with this. I mean, you could do, you know, something kind of like a heart shape, and then you can mirror it around uh, its axis of symmetry, and you can create, you know, something like that. Uh, there's quite a bit you can do with the with the sketch. If you don't want to close your shape, you can uh, create just the outer edge. And what that'll do is it won't extrude. It'll just kind of, it, it'll basically, it, it will extrude your your outline of your shape, but it won't fill in in the top and the bottom. So that's another way to do sketch. For example, if you wanted to maybe like draw the letter M in cursive or something like that, you could do that with the shape. Uh, the shape tool predated the font uh, or the text feature, but uh, you can still use it to create a lot of interesting stuff. So there's that. You can control the length of the extrusion, much like you can with text, and the number of segments, which make, will make more sense when I show you guys actually wireframe editing in edit mode uh, with the polygons and the vertices. The number of segments is basically how many divisions or, or subdivisions occur along the lengthwise axis of the extrusion of the shape, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so that's the free mode of shape. I'm just making sure I don't forget anything. I suppose, yeah, you could, you could turn off extrusion but make it a, a closed shape. And that will create basically a shape that looks like it did before but it's not extruded anymore, which is an interesting uh, feature if you don't want to deal with the extruded aspect. You just want your shape to be a flat result. Um, so turning everything back on here, if I switch over to Polygon, this allows you to not paint with your hands, but to just to pick the individual points of the shape that you want to make, which is um, a way to get a little bit more control over that. Uh, I actually plan to expand this feature down the road and allow you to actually use curves with, uh, you know, the control points. So uh, that'll hopefully be coming soon. But um, you can do quite a bit already with with just the polygons and uh, mirroring uh, if you'd like. So there's that feature. Uh, circle kind of self-explanatory. Basically, there's, there's a circle shape. Uh, you can lock the aspect ratio if you want to get a, 
a, a straight up normal circle or you can turn that off and vary it any way you want and get a circle. Um, you probably think and this is very similar to the cylinder feature and for the most part it is with the exception of how texture coordinates are generated. Um, square, oops, sorry. Uh, so circle and square require you to not be in free view but in one of the dead on views for it to work. Uh, so switching out the square, this is basically um, another way to make a cube, but it's uh, it's it's slightly different, like like I mentioned with with the cylinder. So that's the sketch tool. Quite a bit in that tool alone. Um, we've done plane, sketch, cube, sphere. Uh, I think I cut off right before light. So actually, I I'm gonna go ahead and create some terrain here again, just to get us something. Um, I'm gonna do a lower resolution now, so it might not look as nice. Actually, it looks not nearly as nice. I'm gonna do that again with at least this much res. So we got our terrain and you can see there's one light in the scene already and I'm probably going to need to I'm probably going to need to take a whole other video just to go over lighting in general and uh, I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit when I go over the basics of how 3D um, models are built and how lighting is done. But the basic idea is that the light is the light source in the scene and you are not limited to one light but um, quite a few. Um, so what you can do here is you can drag another light or you can just add the light into the scene and you have a second light. And this light is an object type. It's not a mesh object type, but it's an object type in of itself, which allows you to have lights in the scene. And if I delete that first light, you know, now I only have one light in the scene. Uh, and lights have properties just like objects do themselves. They can be point lights, direction lights, spotlights, uh, they have their own colors, so for example, if I wanted this to be a red light only, it can emit just the, uh, the red color. Um, there's quite a bit you can do with the light objects, so um, that's, that's the light object. Um, moving right along, we have the skybox. Um, if you haven't watched the environment mapping video, uh, environment mapping or cube mapping video will explain uh, why the skybox is the way it is. Once you drag it in, the skybox is created for you by default. It's an environment that wraps your scene, regardless of how far away you move um, from the center of the scene. The, uh, it's always an infinitely far away representation of the sky um, in your scene. So it's, it's a pretty advanced feature. And uh, because uh, skyboxes are uh, a representation of the environment, um, you they use cube maps the same way environment maps work. So um, Inverto Studio comes with a couple of these cube maps and, and you can, you can uh, flip through them and, and see how they work. But basically um, a skybox is, is um, a fake sky for your scene. Um, so that's the skybox. And the cube map renderer is another feature that you would need to watch the environment mapping video to understand how it works. Uh, so much so that I'm not even going to go into it for this video because I completely cover it in the other one and it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to jump right into that without explaining what environment mapping is first. So watch that video if you want to see what the cube map renderer does. And I think I went longer than I wanted to, but those are the objects that come with Virto Studio. I plan on adding a lot more uh, when I get the time over, over the next year or so, but um, these are the ones that come with it right now. The only other thing I'm going to talk about is that um, all objects by default are generated using quads. Uh, if you want triangles instead, you can toggle that mode. Uh, on the iPad app, there's a gearbox on the add uh, panel. On the Mac app, it's just right here in this little uh, combo box. And uh, by changing this, it affects the way the 3D models are generated. It won't affect the way they look to you. Like, I haven't en entered edit mode at all during this video, so if I change this, it won't really affect the way you see it. It affects the way that it works on. it's generated for when you edit it. Um, all right, so that's the object library. Those are the uh, 3D model types that come with Virto Studio. The app is not limited to creating objects like this. Uh, like I'm going to explain in the next video, you can edit all of these objects to your heart's desire and, and create any 3D model you want. But these are the ones that help you hit the ground running real fast and create stuff without having to enter edit mode, uh, at least for these simple types. So that's the end of this tutorial video. I'll catch you guys next time.